Hello everyone. This is my Sparkit Micro Wimshurst machine. It's electric, it has motors on it. And I just received it recently and I put some batteries in it. The sound you hear in the background is I'm uh, bringing a battery back to life. This 12 volt battery here. Uh, which is basically using a pulse width modulating motor controller, as you can see there. Uh, let's see, let's see uh, PWM, 9 to 60 volts, I bought that on Amazon. Um, this is being powered by the big battery there, uh, which is like an 84 volt battery. Um, I know that's exceeding what this can handle, but I'm not putting a full load on it. I'm just using a little bit of energy from it, so it's working so far. It's not getting hot. I also have the fan on it. So our this battery was at um, Cameron. Uh, this is Cameron's battery for those of you know, that uh, follow the channel and know about Cameron. Uh, we collaborate together. Um, he has a YouTube channel, uh, Cam Moto, C-A-M-M-O-T-O. -O. Um, this is Cameron's battery and we're gonna see if we could bring it back to life. And what's happening is we're up to 16 volts almost. That's where I'm going to stop. I want to get it to 16. Um, it started, I think it was at, I don't know if it was 2 volts. I think it was 2 volts. So the battery had been sitting for a long time and it was basically completely depleted. And what we're doing is on the output of the pulse width modulator, and this is strictly experimental purposes only, the output of that, which usually goes to a motor, the negative is going to the negative here the positive is going through this motor right there and then to the positive of this I'm using this just as a load so that this will charge the battery uh, I just want to I want more of a load on this so I'm just experimenting and I'm still learning about this but I have done this before and it's, it, it has brought batteries back to usable condition. So we're gonna see what we can do with this. That's what's happening here. So that's the background sound. As far as the Micro Wimshurst machine goes, I turned it on and it wasn't making sparks. And what I learned, I contacted the company and they said in the shipping, because it's coming from quite far, um, sometimes the plates will move. And I think what they've done is they possibly moved apart. They're supposed to be at a distance that is... Let me see if I could set the phone down and, and show you what I'm thinking about here. And I hope that you can hear me because that motor's running in the background. So the distance of these plates should be about... And I know I have the measurements in the email that the company Sparkit sent me. You can find the Sparkit on the internet. Just Google search uh, Sparkit. S P A R K I T. Sparkit. And that should get you there. So if I understood correctly, they were saying that I can use this, the stand that's made that to hold this up here. I can put the stand in there and make sure the plates are at approximately that distance apart. And as you can see, let's see if you can see, <laughs> see if I can see. The plates are at a much greater distance than it appears that they should be. See? So what I'm gonna, now I think it's interesting because Wimshurst machines are fairly new to me at the moment. I mean, I've seen, I've heard of them and seen them before, but I never studied them to a great degree and never experimented with them to a great degree. Actually, I, I've studied them to a great degree, but never experimented with them to a great degree. I didn't really understand, even though I read about them, I didn't understand what was taking place. So experimentation seems to be the best teacher with consideration of what's been documented and said in the past. So consideration to that, but most importantly is what do I see before me? That's what I really focus on. Because we can be told how to see something and told what we're seeing but what if I just say, well, let's start with a blank canvas and, and, and look at this as something brand new and let experience be the painter of the creation, if I see it that way. 
So let my what I see be the teacher. Um, so I like how the I think it's very interesting how the these here do not touch the metal. I think that's very interesting because on some Windsurf machines I have a larger one. It, there's a brush touching it, a metal brush, and I'm I'm learning that we can use carbon fiber. Uh, uh, that's what this is in here. If you look in here, I think these are carbon fiber brushes, soft. Do you see that brush in there? And those are used on um, different kinds of electronics devices to reduce uh, electrostatic discharge. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? Let's see if we can get these plates together closer together because uh, let's go ahead and do a test real quick so you can just see I'm gonna get these close together and see if we can get any sparks right now okay so I'm turning it on here's it's powered by two AA batteries it's powered up so these two discs are spinning in opposite directions and I'm so inspired by this by the Wimshurst machine spinning in, in opposite directions like this. I really want to get a large Wimshurst machine that's like, that has like four to six feet discs, um, four feet to six feet in diameter. So, so that that's how large the discs would be. And doing the same thing this is doing with larger electric motors, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So I'm looking into that. If anyone makes really, really large ones. So those discs are counter-rotating. As you can see, there's no sparks. Okay, so why is there no sparks? Okay, so we could call this troubleshooting. We can call this um, problem solving. We can call it uh, experimentation. We're gonna see if we can get this sparking. So the company I contacted, Spark It, that's them right there. That's their, that's an S-P-A-R-K-I-T. And they gave me some ideas about what to do. And they said, bring these plates together because in the shipping, the plates can move. And apparently, very clearly, that can affect what this can do. So let's stop the, let's go ahead and stop this. All right, let me see if I can, let's see what it looks like in there. So my thoughts, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this here. My thoughts are, can I slide these discs toward one another, closer to one another. Okay, let's do that now then. So I'm gonna set the phone down and look for tools to do this. Okay, we're back. Let's see if we can get this thing to make sparks. But right now we're gonna see if we can adjust these plates in. A 
and I think what they were telling me to do is to push these in, this plate, closer to the other plates. So let me move these out of the way. And I just hope that I understood the instructions or the directions properly when they said to push these plates together. I think that's what they were saying to do. So I'm just trying to get these plates together at a distance that is allowing the plates to just allow this to fit in the stand. And you can see that the distance is far greater. I mean, it looks like I could put two of these side by side. You see? That distance, that gap there, that distance has to be closer, like this, closer. So how do I get that distance to stay close so that this can work properly? Now, how interesting is it that, that it works that way? Now, you may already understand this, but to me, I think it's very interesting that these plates have to be close together for this to work because the, the metal pieces, the intermittent metal pieces are on this side. They're on this side and this side, right? So they're on the outsides, not the insides. But yet these plates have to be close together for this to work. How interesting is that? I mean, when I look at the Limsource machine, I think of counter-rotating magnets, counter-rotating different kind of fields. One, one plate having a Tesla coil voltage on it, one plate having uh, ultrasonic frequencies on it, and just varying the frequencies of each plate. Even these plates, but also magnetic, having magnets on there too with all south on one side, all north on the other side, north and north on each side, facing each other. Just everything, everything you can think of. Okay, so everything I can think of, and everything I can think of, and you can think of. Because if you have ideas, you can make videos, and I'll watch your videos, and then I'll do what you think of too. I'll do that. Because we're all here to learn. Okay. Let me see if I can get this to slide out. I'm trying to get this plate to slide out. But I might have to just take this apart and do this. I don't want to damage it. So to take it apart, because I bought it pre-assembled, take it apart, I would need to loosen these screws here. There's four of them. One, two, three, and then four. And then the plate, the, these two pieces would separate here. These two pieces would separate. But there was a very small fee to have this assembled and soldered and everything, so I just had them uh, go ahead and assemble it and solder it. And then I just put the batteries in there. Okay, let's see how to get the distance closer together. Okay, everyone, what I may do is I may go, I'm going to go back and read the email, so I need my phone to do that. And I'm just going to go step by step and get these plates closer together. But uh, if anyone's ever had a Wimshurst machine, or especially the Spark It Wimshurst machine where it's not sparking with these little, these two little metal pieces here, if it's not sparking between them, then what I was told was that it's always because 
or almost always or is always because these plates have to be closer together, even though it seems like everything they do is on the outside. Isn't that interesting? So remember, when you learn about the wing source machine and why it works and how it works, realize, and this is the way I see it, that that is just the beginning. That's the introduction. Now where do we go? What else is happening? What else can we do with that? Right? That's just, that's just the imagination there. And these are my <laughs> separate... This is what I'm trying to use to push the plates closer together here. To push them closer together. But I don't want to damage anything, so... Okay, we'll see you in the next stream, next video, or next short, probably, possibly a short video. But I wanted to make a live stream of this just to share with everyone uh, kind of an update of what's happening. Okay, everyone, have a great day. Bye.